Three institutions have jointly developed a cocktail therapy of a monoclonal antibodies which are derived from recovered COVID patients. Data from China and overseas show the treatment could reduce the severe symptoms and mortality by 78 percent. So far, China has set research efforts on three ways of treating COVID diseases, mainly focusing on blocking the entry of the virus into cells, inhibiting virus replication, and regulating the human immune system. For a better understanding of the latest research, I talked to Zhang Linqi, a professor from Tsinghua University School of Medicine. <music> professor Zhang Linqi from Tsinghua University School of Medicine, what a pleasure to see you, sir. Uh, good morning. Good to see you, sir. I know you and your colleagues are working on the COVID pills. Tell me more about the latest development of the Chinese COVID pill. Where are you now? Which stage? Uh, yes, at the uh, very beginning of the outbreak, uh, my laboratory at Tsinghua University immediately start to uh, isolate antibodies from the COVID-19 convalescence patients. Uh, we know the antibody is a, a very important part of our immune system that could protect us from infection and disease progression. So the, the ultimate goal is to isolate those antibodies and select the best among the best, mm -hmm. uh, meaning to have the highest potency and the breath to inhibit viral infections. So those, the best among the best, can be developed into antibody drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, the antibody we isolated from the covalescent patients has already gone through the preclinical and clinical studies and demonstrated the 78% uh, efficacy in reducing death and hospitalizations led by the National Institute of Health. Mm -hmm. So we are very excited to see those results. And hopefully in the near future, we'll be approved for the emergency use here in China and around the world. So you have already submitted the paper to the relevant authorities in China? Yes, yes. That's, yeah. uh, that's uh, have already been done in the early October. And All right. we are looking forward to hearing from them soon. Other uh, pharmaceutical companies around the world are also making their efforts around the clock. Uh, Pfizer, for example, Merck, uh, together uh, with uh, other companies such as uh, Biotherapeutics uh, are working on their version of the COVID pills. They're also submitting their papers to the authority. Is this going to be not only a competition of speed among researchers, but also a competition of speed among regulators? Yes, that's right. Um, in a bigger sense, uh, we are racing against the virus. The pill that you mentioned from uh, Merck and Pfizer are classified as a small molecules. Mm. The, the mechanism of action is to inhibit uh, various enzymes that require for viral replication in the cell. Uh, in contrast, the antibody drugs that we develop and many other companies uh, have developed mainly to stop virus from entering the cells. Mm. So we are a bigger molecule, so we call it the biologics. In a way, the biologics and the small molecules and the vaccines could work hand in hand to, to contribute to mm. the control of the virus spread. As we know, there are three ways, uh, according to some research, uh, for treating COVID cases through pills, for example, mainly focusing on blocking the entry of the virus into the cells, inhibiting yes. virus replications, and regulating the human immune system. Now, uh, which category are yours project falling into? Which one do you consider as a researcher to be more efficient? Uh, in our mind, each kind of pills have its own advantages, uh, such as the small molecule is easy to take, uh, but the, um, the requirement for early diagnosis and the long-term safety benefits still need to be, uh, still need to be studied. Uh, our drugs are antibody drugs that derive from human and then modified and then back into human. So it's come in a natural form. 
it has two major functions. One is to inhibit virus from entry, so it's antiviral activity. Mm. On the other hand, the antibody is a part of our immune system, mm. so it could also boost our immune system. And then through the advance of uh, biologic technologies, we are able to treat some changes to the antibody, and that antibody could have a durable effect, long-lasting in our blood. So you could see, and then from the current point of view, antibody are superior at current stage. Mm. So you're suggesting, it seems to be, if I'm reading between words, uh, what you are doing now is much safer version of the COVID pill than, let's just say, some of the other options. Is that what you're trying to suggest? Yes, that's, I, I would agree with that because this antibody has an antiviral function, has an immune boosting function, mm -hmm. and has a durability uh, uh, superiority. So in the context of this uh, prevention and the treatment, antibody drugs are certainly the top choice in our mind. Mm. Professor Zhang, we also see debates about that in the vaccine uh, research, isn't it? That there are uh, different vaccine categories. Some are more natural and has been tested for a long time. Uh, for example, China's yes. versions. Uh, uh, however, uh, others, uh, uh, for example, that by Pfizer, it's uh, more mRNA uh, type and that's less tested before and yet this time worked very well. So how do you see, you know, that debate carried on into the area of treatment pills. As a researcher, how do you see this debate? Uh, this debate is very healthy because scientifically we want to seek uh, the ultimate truth. Yeah. For the ideal vaccines, we need is potency, meaning that it could induce very high immune response, protected immune response. And also, we are looking for breadth. That means you have to able to induce response to recognize all different variants. Mm. Um, the third criteria is we need to look for durability. So we want to have an immune response induced, have a long-lasting effect. Mm. So based on these three criteria, the current vaccines, regardless what type that, that you just mentioned, still have not reached that ideal scenario. So the scientists in the field from all different countries and different, uh, different uh, fields are rushing to, to, to achieve that ideal goal. So I would say we are still far away from the ideal situation. And then the relative advantage and disadvantages still need to be studied in the long run. Mm. Professor Zhang, you know very well that there has been various variants of uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, COVID virus. And, and people are asking about the question whether the treatment pills that we are researching about today around the world are going to be relevant if the variants continue uh, to multiply, you know, the, the numbers of variants in the future. Uh, what do you make of that, and particularly about the ones that you are researching about? That's a very good question. It's right to the scientific focus that right now. The, while the virus continue to vary and, and then to escape from our drugs therapy and from antibody drugs and from vaccines. Mm. So we are monitoring this this, this chasing game very carefully. Uh, luckily and thankfully, the antibody drug that we have developed are able to uh, recognize and then uh, kill the virus from all, all different parts of the world, uh, meaning that our antibodies still maintain antiviral activity against mm. alpha, beta, gamma, delta variants. So that's why the efficacy showed in the three, phase three trial are very encouraging. Of course, the other legitimate question I should ask is uh, how many people, how big is their base in terms of uh, trials in the earlier times? Uh, the trial can vary in numbers and it really depends on the incidence of diseases. So if the uh, drugs is able to, uh, to show a greater promise, promise in a very high incident area, the number of uh, participants are not particular big. So we are talking about in the thousands of thousands of uh, trial participants. Mm. 
Uh, are you suggesting, Professor Zhang, this is all done in China because we know uh, China has been having this zero tolerance policy against COVID-19 cases mm -hmm. and therefore not many cases inside this country? Uh, are you, or are you doing this globally? And how are you getting yes, the numbers uh, from others if you are doing it globally? Absolutely. This is not a, uh, only conducted in China, but with collaborators from many other countries uh, to be able to show efficacy, safety in the real world situations. It's not practical uh, uh, to do this in China right now, given the caseload is so small. Mm. So the, our colleagues in the United States, in the uh, South Africa, in the Mexican uh, in Mexico have contributed substantially to this uh, great work. Mm. A very interesting development and certainly important development. Another thing we want to ask about the treatment pills is uh, when they could be available because right now we do see that uh, uh, relevant uh, authorities are giving green lights to vaccines and to treatment pills in a much faster speed uh, than to other uh, 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 pharmaceutical productions. Usually the time frame is about six to seven years, but we have seen with vaccine, for example, it could be very short. Now, what about right. treatment pills? Yes, this is a very critical question to all of us involved because yeah. safety concern is the most important factor everybody consider. So despite of accelerated process, the safety requirement has never, never decreased in the slightest way. So the, the question arises maybe how could you uh, do things uh, so fast without compromising your safety standard? Uh, the practical uh, uh, path that we have that the, the, the practical path that we have taken is to conduct the, um, the procedure, regulate procedure, development procedure in a parallel way instead of a sequential way. Mm -hmm. So we could take more risks, but to gain a lot of time in accelerating the process. Uh, we see that China, for example, with the vaccines by Sinopharm and also Sinovac, uh, they've been sharing the rights of these uh, drugs uh, with other countries which meaning that other countries can also produce these drugs and therefore it could be better serve their people and their region. Now, China has been doing that. Now, with the treatment pills, we understand there are uh, certain Western pharmaceutical companies who are also in the process of doing it. Now, what about the Chinese treatment pills, for example, the ones that you're researching about? How do you see the future of uh, you know, intellectual property rights of it and how to make sure that it can be better shared by the rest of the world? Yes, and this is the, this is a really really question that we are looking for is to have a international coordinated mechanism, mm. such as led by World Health Organization, will have appropriate arrangement for various patent uh, as well as appropriate market to apply for those patent and product. So ultimately, we will. Uh, share what we have, and then for the benefit of the people around the world, not just uh, not just China, not just developed countries, but also many other developing countries as well. But mechanistically, we are looking forward to a major coordinator such as WHO to conduct this activity. I see. My final question, Professor Zhang, even after vaccination, uh, there were many escape cases already. Uh, meaning after vaccination, still being infected. We see that in Europe these days a lot. So uh, how do you see the treatment pills coming out likely to complement what vaccination has already achieved while at the same time be able to mend the fences? This is an absolutely amazing question. Uh, from the vaccine perspective, regardless of what type of vaccine that we're talking about, we are facing um, a uh, less than 100% protection. This is due to many reasons. First is the vaccine, when you reach a certain level, is weighing down during time. And then also as a emerge, emergence of different variants, and then the vaccine will reduce this potency against those variants. So the current vaccines is have some 
shortcomings in terms of efficacy against different variants uh, due to the, and also not as high as we would wish to be. Mm. So we still need to develop much more potent, durable, and, and has a broad activity against different variants. We have a presence of using vaccine and antibody at the same time. Uh, for age, uh, for babies that are born to HPV infected mother, we vaccinate baby with HPV vaccine and give antibody at the same time. I learned a lot. Thank you so much, Professor Zhang Linqi. All the best luck to the treatment pills that you and your colleagues are working on.